What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and the art of deleting has really taken off. With tools from awesome people like Debaura making the process so much easier than it was just a few years ago. But the question is, should you really be deleting your CPU and is there really that much of a benefit? But before we look into our test results and actually running some tests for ourselves, we first need to actually cover what on earth deleting actually is. For those of you who have no idea what this is and have managed to live under a pretty thick rock, well, deleting is simply the process of removing, as we do right here, the IHS on top of your CPU to expose the thermal interface material, or TIM, and replace it with higher quality material, then stick that guy back together, slap it in your CPU slot, and get better performance. Now, aftermarket thermal paste has really come a long way as well, making this process a lot more valuable. Now, this was made popular around the time of the Haswell days, when Intel first moved to a thermal interface material that was more of a paste consistency rather than just using solder to solder the piece of metal or the IHS on top of the CPU to the actual die. So if you look at older CPUs and try and delete them, you'll crack them in half because the top is actually soldered to the rest of this. Whereas these days, there's just a bit of silicon as we can see by the little black ring and some thermal interface material. There's nothing really that kind of a solid holding this thing together. Don't get me wrong, they can't just pop off usually, but there are not exactly soldered all together. And as time has passed, we've really seen the abundance of these tools and also to aftermarket processes to make this so much easier. From the humble days of using razor blades, hammers and vices to pop the little top off to now with custom built tools that are being sold for this exact process, times have definitely changed. But again, simply put, deleting is the process of removing the IHS or this middle thing from the CPU and thus getting better performance. Now all that's sounds kind of good, but why even bother deleting a CPU? Well, that is the ultimate question. For everyone, there is a slightly different reason. Whether you're looking at getting a world record overclock or you just want better CPU temperatures, there's always a different reason for a lot of different people. But one of the first reasons is for cooling solutions. If you don't want to have the actual thermal resistance of this little piece of metal, a lot of people do just have the chip itself sitting in the socket with a custom cooling solution over the top. So it's basically the die straight on onto the CPU cooler. Whether you're cooling with LN2 or some sort of high-end, super custom, super not mainstream cooling solution, there is a benefit of just running the chip itself. Now, yes, you can't just pull it off and expect a CPU cooler to work. So if you're thinking, hey, I'll just pop off the top and now run this connected to my, you know, Hyper 212 Evo from Cooler Master, that won't exactly work as you have to take off the actual CPU retention arm and things go a little bit crazy and maybe a little bit out of reach for a lot of people. So for what a lot of people do is replace that thermal interface material, slap it back together so it's one unit, and use their CPU as it was. And this is pretty popular for about 99% of us that would even bother going around with this difference. And let's face it, one degree Celsius for you and me probably doesn't make that much of a difference, but for a world record overclocker, one degrees of difference could be the difference between getting that world record and being a complete failure, blowing up thousands of dollars of PC hardware. So for them, maybe really important. Another reason is again to bring down those temperatures as Intel has been known for using okay-ish thermal paste. I mean, sure, it'll be perfectly fine for 99% of us out there, but for those of you who are going for higher-end overclocks, there can definitely be a really big advantage of going with an aftermarket solution. And to be clear once again, no, just because you have an Intel CPU doesn't mean it's gonna be overheating because you don't have the greatest thermal interface material. This is really coming down to the people who are really pushing the limits of their PC hardware. So deleting actually sounds not too bad. You replace the okay, but in the grand scheme of things, pretty crappy stock thermal interface material and you get way better overclocks. What could go wrong? Well, actually there's a lot of things that can go wrong with this process and uh, has been around for quite some time. Back in the old Haswell days when we were using razor blades and like little hammers and stuff like that, the slightest slip of the hand could instantly kill your CPU like that. Whether you accidentally scratch the part of the CPU that controls the PCI lanes, making no PCI connectivity a thing, or you do something else that just destroys the CPU, there are a lot of things that could break a CPU if you go ahead and do it wrong. And even though 
although there are a lot better tools that make it a whole lot safer these days, there's still the chance that you may actually just wreck your CPU by accidentally doing something wrong when you are deleting it. Again, from accidentally marking a bit of the CPU that controls something like the PCI lanes making no video card compatibility, whether you accidentally shock this guy with an ESD discharge, or you go ahead and pop that IHS off, put everything back together, and for some reason it has decided to break, there are just a lot of things out there that could kill your CPU. Not to mention, if the CPU does still work, if you do choose the wrong thermal interface material like IC Diamonds, so you may actually be wrecking the IHS and also to the actual chip underneath it by using a material that actually has diamonds in it that uh, will scratch up the surface and basically ruin your chip, leading to a much faster death. And let's say that your CPU does survive, you manage to delete it, get it all back together, you're getting much better temps. Let's say in a month that your CPU just dies because it was a defective unit and probably would have died in a month's time anyway. You're going to have absolutely no warranty. The moment you even get this guy out of your socket and do anything else with it, you basically have just voided the warranty. So now that you've deleted it, you're going to have a very expensive paperweight that will probably have the IHS fall apart like what happens here. But what happens if it does go right? Well, today, let's find out. I borrowed a 7700K. Well, this one's not the 7700K because by now I probably would have broken it. This is just an old one that I deleted a while ago. But I did borrow a 7700K that had been deleted with the really cool little debourer deleting tool, which I thought was really cool to see, and overclocked it to 4.8 gigahertz with a toasty 1.24 volts on the V-Core. This thing was getting really, really toasty. We paired it up with an old school, but still very practical Corsair h 100 and we hit a max temperature of 97 degrees Celsius with this stock thermal interface material. Once we did change it out, it dropped all the way down to 84 degrees Celsius. Now the thermal interface material that we did replace was with the uh, Thermal Grizzly Chironaut, I believe it is pronounced, uh, which from my testing and my understanding is not a too bad option if you are going down the thermal paste option. I'm sure someone out there is going to point out, why didn't I use liquid metal? Because the owner didn't want liquid metal, so I really didn't have much of a choice and and unfortunately, I don't have a 7700K. I only have this guy, which is a 4770K, actually 3770K, and uh, it's kind of dead at the moment. So for me, I don't exactly have a deleted CPU that I could run my own tests and put my own thermal material on there. So we did go with thermal grizzly stuff. Then we really did get good results. With 13 degrees difference between the stock and also to aftermarket, it was a really nice drop. Now again, to be clear, I would not be running that 7700K at the voltages and at the speeds that we're testing for today, but it was good to see that the 7700K could still stand up to it. And also too, the chip was getting a little bit toasty, but saw a really nice temperature drop. Now deleting a 7700K is really nothing impressive in today's grand scheme of things here in 2018, but it does show a really nice decrease in temperatures for the chips that are out there. Now with that being said, for people who are pushing the limits, newer CPUs out there such as Ryzen chips and also to Lake do come out with much better thermal interface material than previous generations, and not to mention upcoming CPUs like the new Ryzen chips that are coming down the line or next generation Ryzen chips, they also too will be featuring solid IHS. So the whole debate of deleting or not deleting may be completely taken away from us in just a few years as a lot of manufacturers are rumored to be moving back to the old soldered process. So then that leads us to the question, should you go ahead and delete your CPU? And to keep things simple, no, there really isn't too much of a benefit for most home users out there. Sure, don't get me wrong, in today's testing we did observe a 13 degrees Celsius savings, but to be honest with you, I risked killing a multiple hundred dollar CPU to save 13 degrees Celsius. Honestly, for most people out there who don't have k skews or even who do have k skews but aren't exactly going for super high overclocks or super hot voltages, there really is no benefit from going ahead and changing out the uh, thermal interface material. Now do keep in mind, if you're thinking, well my CPU runs say 40 degrees under load, I want to bring it all the way down to 20 degrees or even lower, do keep in mind things like ambient temperature will play into fact, so if your room is 30 degrees Celsius and your CPU is running at 40 degrees, you're not going to get much lower than 20 degrees in terms of your temperatures, or rather less than 30 degrees. And uh, in terms of other things out there, such as coolers on this guy, it doesn't exactly scale all over the temperature range. So just because I got 13 degrees Celsius better doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get 13 degrees yourself, but there still should be some sort of savings. Now, I did mention that I would not recommend anyone actually doing this for even more 
more reasons. So as I did mention, sure, I did get lucky. The CPU did survive and also too, I got much better temperatures. But honestly, I would rather spend multiple of hundreds of dollars on buying a really cool water cooling setup as well as my CPU rather than just buying two CPUs because I accidentally broke one when I deleted it itself. And the only people that really should be considering going into the deleting stage should be those who have already overclocked their CPU. They know they can go higher, but their only limitation is temperatures and they've already got a balling cooling solution. Sure, you do get some savings, but honestly, the risk kind of factor does uh, outweigh it for a lot of people out there. But with that being said, guys, let me know down in that comment section, would you ever consider deleting your own CPU? Would you risk it or would you just rather put that money into buying a really cool water cooling setup for the same amount that you would pay for another CPU? I'll also to leave some links down in that description box to the CPUs that we tested today, the thermal compound that we also to use and not to mention the cool little Debaro uh, deleting tool that we used. Otherwise, guys, with that being said, why not also to check out our social pages whilst you're down in that description box. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.